So by clicking on this video, what you're saying is that you actually want to know what it means to take the red pill. And I'm not talking about some kind of dating ideology or some kind of belief about the government, how it's secretly controlling people. Many tons of people use this word nowadays, oh, red pill this, red pill that. But 99% of people who talk about taking the red pill don't actually even have the slightest clue about what it actually means to take the red pill. The movie The Matrix is pointing to a very deep and disturbing truth about the true nature of reality. And this is a truth that is so disturbing that many people do everything in their power to avoid learning about it. So if you don't want to have your core fundamental beliefs about reality shaken and uprooted, then I recommend clicking off this video. I'm giving you the opportunity to turn back. That would be like kind of like taking the blue pill. No, no bad feelings, whatever. Click off this video if you don't want to actually have the fundamental, your fundamental belief in reality questioned, then just leave this video. Because from here on out, I'm going to be deconstructing what you think reality actually is. This is the actual meaning of taking the red pill. Now, last year I went on a meditation retreat where I spent three weeks basically receiving guidance and teachings from an enlightened master. And this man had practiced meditation for 40 years of his life. Just by sitting in his presence, you could feel his wakeful energy. This, this man had like thousands of years worth of wisdom bottled up inside of him. And you could feel his energy. And he would give like two, three hour talks about the true nature of existence, the true nature of consciousness. And one thing that he said really stuck with me. So he was a Buddhist teacher and he was talking about the word Dharma. What does this word Dharma mean? The Buddhists use the word Dharma. A lot of people think Dharma just means the teaching of the Buddhists. But the word Dharma, what does that actually mean? It's a very loaded word. The teacher said that it'll take you 20 or 30 years of contemplation just to begin to understand what the word Dharma actually means. The word Dharma means taking the red pill. And this is what he said Dharma means. He said, Dharma is knowing that which is a concept and that which is beyond concept. And then he said it again. He said, Dharma is knowing that which is a concept and that which is beyond concept. And this is exactly what it means to take the red pill. Now, <laughs> in the movie, uh, Morpheus gives Neo two options. He says, hey, you can take the blue pill, which basically means that you go back to sleep, uh, you, you live your, the rest of your life in ignorance. Whereas if you want to take the red pill, then I'll tell you the truth. But it won't be a comfortable truth. It won't be something that you actually want to stomach. And for myself, I actually got a little glimpse of what this actually means to take the red pill. Uh, uh, last month, I was on a meditation retreat, another one. And I was doing nine straight days of meditation where I was meditating like 16 hours a day, doing sitting meditation, walking meditation, where all I would do all day is sit down and just basically deconstruct my sensory experience where I would create very fine tuned labels for directly experiencing my feelings, my thoughts, my emotions, my sights, my sounds, everything that appears in my awareness, I was trying to be as mindful of it as possible. And after three or four days, my awareness was like 
crystal clear. I literally felt like I was on, in, in, on the peak of an acid trip in every single moment just from the meditation practice because I was practicing so vigorously. And after about four days, I had a kind of breakthrough where I, I got a glimpse into what my teacher last year was actually talking about. As I was doing my walking meditation, I was doing very slow walking where I was labeling every single minute detail of my footsteps. And my concentration was so sharp that I actually was able to kind of investigate the experience of anger. Some, somebody did something on the retreat that kind of angered me. I forgot what it was, but I remember I was feeling angry about something. On these retreats, you, you get angry like it's nothing. And I, I was investigating anger and I was kind of diving in and I was realizing, what, where is this anger coming from? What is the core of it? Why am I angry? And I basically realized the reason why I'm angry is because I want something. Now I'm contemplating, but what do I want? And very clearly in this moment, I was able to see, oh, what I really want is I want spiritual awakening. I want a clear awareness of existence. I want to be grounded and present in the moment. That's my deepest, most core fundamental want. And I believe that is the core fundamental want of all human beings. We want to be awake and aware of the truth. So as I was walking, I was contemplating, wait, what is the ego? What is the separation? What is the mind? And I kind of broke through where all of a sudden I realized that the mind, which is the creator of thoughts, just the, when I say mind, I mean all your thoughts, this whole web of beliefs. Imagine your mind is like a, a ball of yarn and it's just full of beliefs and concepts and ideas and they're all kind of self-consistent. They're all raveled onto each other. All your ideas, concepts about the world, theories, beliefs. The purpose of this mind is not to discover the truth. The purpose of this mind is to help your body to survive. Because the human predicament is that we are born into the world. We're thrust into the world. We don't know what anything is at all. We see sights, sounds, and there's objects. Every, everything is all happening all at once. And all of a sudden, we have to survive in the world. But we don't know what the world even is. So what your mind has to do is it has to start creating beliefs and stories about what reality is so that you can survive. That's why human beings absolutely hate the unknown. We're afraid of the unknown because if you don't know what something is, then that's threatening. You don't know that if, if there's like a dark corner in your room, you don't know what's there. It might be something like a monster that'll come and eat your face. So human beings love to know things because that helps us survive. So the truth of reality is that all of this here, hello, hi, hello, all of this here is unknown. We have all these objects in our sensory field. We don't actually know what they are, <laughs> but we've told ourselves that we know what they are so that we can survive. So the purpose of the mind, this ball of beliefs, what we do is this mind creates distinctions and dualities. It basically creates labels. So you just label objects. So I got a phone here. Let me turn on airplane mode. We got a phone. Hey, this is a phone. I got some headphones. Hey, these, these are headphones. And the reason why we label these objects is so that we know what they are so that we can use them 
for our survival. I'm not actually interested in investigating the true nature of headphones. I'm not interested in actually discovering the, the essence of, of this object. All I want to know is what is it going to do for me so that I can survive? So that your mind is biased towards survival and all of your beliefs, all of your stories, everything you think is true about reality, those beliefs are not there because they're true. Those beliefs are there because they help you survive. And in this moment, when I was doing my walking meditation and I realized this, I realized basically the mind creates stories, narratives about science, about religion, about my family, about the whole world. We create these stories just so that I can have context so that I can live in the world without having an existential crisis every five seconds. So when you're walking down the street, you need to pretend to yourself that you know what reality is so that you don't have an existential crisis. Because if I were to basically come up to you on the street and wipe your mind clean, to wipe it clean of all beliefs and ideas that you've absorbed since your childhood, what would happen is all of a sudden you would be here in, a, in an experience, but you would have no labels. You wouldn't know what a road is. You wouldn't know what a tree is or what a house is. You wouldn't know what any of these things are. You would basically be like a newborn baby. And this state where the mind is wiped clean and all of the beliefs and stories that are only there to help you survive, not because they're true, they're only there to help you survive, when it's all wiped away, you see the true nature of reality. This is taking the red pill, abandoning all ideas, concepts, realizing that which is a concept and that which is beyond concept. So what is a concept? A concept is basically something that you've made up, but you think that it's real. So you actually think that there is a, a, a fundamental difference between this USB stick and this cell phone. You actually think that these are two separate objects. But if I were to wipe your mind clean of ideas and beliefs, what would actually happen is you wouldn't even be able to see the difference between this USB stick and this cell phone. They would actually appear as one. So <laughs> taking the red pill, what you realize is that all of reality is one and that all distinctions and separations are imagined by the ego mind for the purpose of selfish survival. When you realize all of reality is one, what does that mean? What are the ramifications of that? Because sure, yeah, okay, all of reality is one. But let me explain to you what that actually means that all of reality is one. First of all, what that means is that this present experience here, without thoughts or stories, but just the pure, the bare experience here, this is the true nature of reality. Reality wiped clean of thoughts and interpretations, just bare experience, that is what reality is. There is nothing behind the scenes. There is no computer somewhere else that's running the hologram of life. Life is basically like a hologram without a computer that's running it when you realize that your entire reality is created by ideas, created by concepts and beliefs, even your very belief that the earth is round and that it's floating in space and time, 
That is not real. That is part of the dream. That is a belief, a concept that your ego mind has invented for the purpose of giving you existential context. So that again, when you walk down the street, you have a vague idea of like, okay, I'm a human being. I live on earth. You know, I'm, uh, there's nothing fishy going on here. All of a sudden there's this whole magnificent universe and it's complex and it's beautiful, but you know, I'm not, I don't want to think about that too much. So I'm just going to kind of put it in a little box Say, oh, you know, I'm just a monkey on a planet and then I'll just walk around and then everything will be good and I don't have to think about existential life-threatening questions anymore. See, that's why these this truth is so disturbing and that's why people who say that they take the red pill, people who leave comments on, on videos talking about, oh, I'm so glad that I took the red pill and I realized that the government is corrupt or that I realized that uh, women uh, only want your money. See, these are like the, the red pill ideologies. See, what happens is the, the human being says that you're taking the red pill, but really what's happening is you're just going deeper into the blue pill. So imagine it like this. Imagine Neo in the Matrix. Imagine Morpheus gives him the red pill. Neo takes the red pill, but instead of awakening from the hologram, and realizing that reality is a dream. Instead, Neo just stays in the hologram, still stuck in the dream, and then he just goes around and he feels so proud of himself for taking the red pill, he starts bragging to other people on the street. Say, hey, oh look, I took the red pill, look how cool I am. <laughs> or he starts leaving YouTube comments, like, oh, I'm so glad I, I realized that the hologram government is corrupt. See, Neo, you're still stuck in the matrix. <laughs> you still think reality is real. You still don't understand the fundamental unity of existence. You still don't realize that all of existence is your consciousness. Everything is your mind. You still think there's a fundamental separation between you and your mom, you and your dad. You and your brother and sister. You and um, the people in the other country. You still think reality is separate, but you haven't realized yet. See, this USB stick and this phone, the separation only exists in the mind. Reality is literally made of the exact same substratum, the same substance. In the same way where when you're, you're dreaming at night, you're walking in the forest in your dream, you see the trees, you see the squirrels, you see the river. This dream is made of the same substance as you. So the tree is made of your mind. Your hands are made of the same substance. The river is made of the same substance as the squirrel is made of. It's all made of pure consciousness. Pure imagination. Now scientists might say, oh Adam, the, but the squirrel is made of cells and molecules, and the, the squirrel is made of cells and organs, whereas the river is made of H2O molecules. But no, see, you don't understand. Each, all of that is just an idea in your dream. <laughs> Imagine you're dreaming and you're a scientist in your dream and you think you're so smart. You go in, in your dream, you go study the H2O molecules of the river. And then in your dream, you go study the dream squirrel to see the dream cells and the dream organs. And you say, Adam, see, you're wrong. Look, the, the squirrel is made of cells and, and hair and muscle tissues, whereas the river is made of uh, hydrogen and, and oxygen. So see, you're wrong. They're not made of the same, the same substance. But I say, no, see, you don't understand. You're dreaming. <laughs> it's all made of consciousness. It's just made of pure awareness. All of reality is the matrix. 
not a computer hologram because a computer hologram implies that there is some computer somewhere else that's running the hologram. But reality is actually a hologram without any computer in the background running it because reality is one. So oneness, when you realize that objects aren't separate from each other, when you realize that your mind, your, your ball of yarn of beliefs and stories and ideologies, all of that, the reason why that's there is to help you survive. When you realize that this web of beliefs isn't actually true, but it's just a, a, like a storybook, like a children's book. When you realize that all of reality is one and it's interconnected, then you also realize that it's all made of the same substance, which is just this. It's made of pure being, pure existence. You might ask Adam, but what is pure existence? What is pure being? I can't give you a conceptual, logical answer so that you can add it to your collection of concepts because being is prior to concept. So first, reality exists. Then, as a second order phenomena, concepts, thoughts, and beliefs are added on top of it. So you can think the first layer of reality, this the, the fundamental layer, is being and then on top of being you have concepts thoughts ideas stories beliefs oh the government is like this oh women are like this oh um science is like this religion is like this so all, all these beliefs are a second order phenomena but first in order for any concept to exist you have to have being being is the core. Being is always here. It's right here. Hello. Being. <laughs> it's here now. And then on top of being, you have interpretations and stories and concepts. So when you ask Adam, but what is being? What is being made of? See, what, what you're asking me to do is you're asking me to give you a concept to explain being. <laughs> being is not something that is explained conceptually. It, it, it just is. <laughs> it's just being. It's just pure existence. So when you're able to detach from all concepts when you're able to sit in meditation which is the making of a distinction the purpose of meditation is to make the distinction what is a concept and what is pure being what meditation is is you're sitting you're watching your thoughts because thoughts are concepts the problem is that human beings do such a terrible job of separating concepts from being. Do a terrible job of this. And when you confuse your concepts for reality, for actual reality itself, when you confuse the map for the territory, what happens is now you're stuck in the matrix. You're taking the blue pill. You think that what you think reality is, is actual reality. But you don't understand yet that actual reality, actual reality, has nothing to do with what you think. That's why the title of this video, the actual meaning of taking the red pill is not what you think. <laughs> exactly. It's specifically not what you think. <laughs> so I didn't make that as the title as part of clickbait. I made that literally. <laughs> it's actually not what you think. So if you're thinking, 
If you're in concept fairy tale land, if you're trying to come up with a theory of everything, it's like, oh, Adam, you know, the aliens, the conspiracy theory, um, 14 billion years ago, the Big Bang, uh, all this. See, where are you? You're up in your mind, concepts, ideas. None of that has anything to do with being. Being is the first order phenomena. Thoughts and concepts are added after the fact. So the best way to take the red pill, to actually realize the truth of existence, is to detach from thoughts and concepts by doing actual meditation. Not by doing five minute guided meditations where you imagine a glowing white orb and, and uh, it like washes your soul of sins. So, okay, so that's like, you know, one type of meditation that works sometimes. But if we're actually talking about waking up from the dream of life, then what that requires is you to be able to discern that which is concept and that which is beyond concept. So you know that you're taking the blue pill if you are stuck in beliefs, in ideologies, in stories, if you think reality is, is a, a story. So people in the comments section of videos, they're like, oh, I'm so glad I took the red pill and I realized that the government is corrupt. <laughs> See, no, <laughs> that's the blue pill. You've used the idea of the red pill to actually <laughs> take the blue pill. <laughs> To st you're still in the hologram. You still think the government is not made of your mind. You're still in the dream. The point of the blue pill is to tell yourself that you've taken the red pill. Every single person on earth thinks they're taking the red pill. Nobody walks around and says they're taking the blue pill, except Drake in that song where he's like, I am in the matrix and I just took the blue pill. No, ho oh shit, no fucking ho oh shit. <laughs> that song's really good. But for the most part, every single person thinks they're taking the red pill. The p but, but of course, that's not the case. In fact, every single person is actually taking the blue pill. But the point of the blue pill is that you tell yourself that you're taking the red pill. That's exactly how it has to work. The point of being lost in the illusion is to think that you've escaped the illusion. That's how the illusion gets you. You think reality is real. You think everything is solid. You think the government actually exists <laughs> and it's just not a concept in your mind. You think the earth actually exists. You think physical objects actually exist. And you tell yourself, oh, th this, isn't a, this isn't a story. This is the truth. I've t I'm, I'm awake, Adam. I'm living in the, the true reality. I, I've taken the red pill. No, actually, um, you've taken the blue pill. I hate to break it to you. Because you're not actually deconstructing beliefs and ideas. You're still in concept land. You haven't been able to separate apart being, awareness, non-clinging awareness is the key word today. What is non-clinging awareness? What is it that's left over when all clinging to thoughts, ideas, sensations, when all clinging stops, all storytelling and confabulation stops, what is left over? That is what it means to take the red pill. So you might ask, okay, Adam, so what's, what's the practical steps here? Okay, awesome. You just fucked my entire reality. Now I actually know what it means to take the red pill. Um, you know, I'm, I'm on your team, Adam. I get it. Okay. What do I do now? All right. So in order to actually wake up from the dream of reality, 
There are specific meditation practices that you need to do, mindfulness meditation. One very powerful meditation, which is the surrender meditation. I actually made a free one. I'll link it in the description when it's ready to go. Click that link, you'll download the free surrender to the present moment meditation where we let go of all attachment. That meditation makes you feel really good and also at the same time helps you take the red pill. This is helping you move into being cognition. So the red pill is known as being cognition, where you're seeing reality for how it actually is, not for how you think it is, which is survival cognition, which is blue, the blue pill is survival cognition. It's you're, you're stuck in concept fairy tale land because everything you see is just to benefit your selfish survival. All of reality to you is just, what can I get out of it as a selfish ego? But when you deconstruct the ego by detaching from thoughts and concepts and by observing them neutrally, then you move out of sur survival cognition which is deficiency cognition, which is lack, where you feel like you're separated from the world. You feel like the world is out there and you have to fight against it to get what you want. This is the, the, the lack vibration where you're needy and you're afraid and nothing goes your way. You feel like you have to fight against the universe because fundamentally at the very core of your being, you're separated. You're not aware of your true nature. You're not connected to being, which is the red pill. So you can check out my free meditation for connecting to being also on top of that, using psychedelics in a smart way, not in a stupid, reckless way, but in an intelligent way and an intentional way where you do low doses of mushrooms or LSD intentionally you, while also studying spirituality, studying Buddhism, Zen, Advaita Vedanta, learning what the ancient mystics have to say, going on meditation retreats, and actually absorbing the wisdom from the masters. By doing these types of practices, by studying, by getting your intellectual foundation right, which is why I make these lectures to help you understand conceptually how reality works. <laughs> then when you get your intellectual foundation right, then when you go to do your psychedelics, then it kind of all comes together in a beautiful way. And that is what allows you to have non-dual breakthroughs, to have God realization, self-realization. So the, the key, the key takeaway here, practical steps, meditation, psychedelics intentionally and study spirituality properly. All three of those things I'm going to be helping you do on this channel here. I have, um, a lot of advice about meditation. I'm actually working on a mini course for doing some of the most powerful meditation exercises that I've learned in the last five years of going on retreats and studying and going to live in Thailand with monks. I've learned some extremely powerful meditation exercises and I'm going to be making a very affordable and, and, and short and brief, but very powerful mini course for teaching you everything you need to know about that. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's going to be awesome. Also, I'm going to be helping you with practical psychedelic advice, how to use it safely, responsibly for the purpose of spiritual awakening. And, uh, I know I was going to say, uh, you can think of mushrooms as like the red pill. Mushrooms are like the red pill. You actually take them and you wake up, but only if you put all the pieces together, you study spirituality, you understand beliefs, you understand the difference between survival cognition and being cognition which is what I'm helping you to understand here and stay tuned because I have some awesome videos about this exact topic coming up. If you like this video, leave it a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and uh, stay, stick with me because I'm interested in actually helping you to awaken, helping you actually 
ground your awareness in the source of being. And once you do this, you feel so good. You feel like you actually surrender and flow with life. You can do what you're passionate about for a living. You're not sabotaging yourself. You're not holding yourself back. You're not afraid of what other people think of you because you're at one with all of existence. You're literally God creating your ideal reality. And that's what I'm going to be helping you to do on this channel. If you want that free meditation for surrender and for f going with the flow of life, it's one of the most powerful meditations I've made. It's the actual practice that I use for myself every single day. Uh, you can click the link below when it's ready. Um, it'll, that link will bring you to that meditation. And besides that, I will see you in the next video.